In this video, we're going to work just a few examples showing the technique of analyzing these diode circuits, which involves, first of all, determining whether the diode is going to be conducting or not, and if so, then what will the voltages and currents be surrounding it. To do this type of quick analysis, again, we'll just use the ideal diode model that we've been using thus far. So let's take this circuit right here. We have 5 volts at this point and 0 volts here. So the general voltage drop is going to be in this direction. And the diode is designed or is, is uh, connected to allow for current to be flowing in this direction. So we can tell just by looking at this one that the diode will be conducting. We're assuming an ideal diode, so the voltage across the diode will be zero. And for part A then, the voltage across here, or the voltage reference to ground, is going to be zero. Again, using an ideal vo diode mo model, um, there would be no voltage drop across that. So V out would be equal to zero if this is V out. Maybe we just call it V. Either way. And the current then is going to be I will equal the 5 volts minus the 0 volts divided by the 2.5 kilo ohm resistor. That gives us 2 milliamps. Now, this is basically the same circuit, only the diode is connected in the opposite direction. Clearly, this, again, the, the voltage drop is in this direction. This is the direction the current would flow if the diode were to allow it, but because the diode is reverse biased, the uh, there will not be current flowing through here. So for part B, I is going to equal zero. I will equal zero. But what does that then make the output voltage? Well, if there's no current flowing through, through this 2.5 kilo ohm resistor, there will be no voltage drop across here. And this voltage will be pulled up to the 5 volts, or V will equal 5 volts. These resistors are sometimes called pull-up resistors for this very reason. If there's no current passing through them, there will be no voltage drop across it, and this output voltage then is pulled up to the source voltage there. Let's take a look at part C here. Now we've got the voltage source as a negative voltage source here, and ground here, so we've got 0 volts here, we've got negative 5 volts there. The voltage gradient, or the voltage change, would be having current going in this direction. But the diode is connected in such a way that it doesn't allow current to flow in that direction. So once again, the diode would be an open circuit, not allowing current to flow. And the output voltage, so first of all, current will equal zero. And this voltage here, relative to ground, is going to be, well, if no current is flowing, there will be no voltage drop there. So this voltage here would be negative 5 volts, and V would equal negative 5 volts. The output is pulled down to the negative 5 volts with an open circuit there. Let's take a look at D. Now the diode is is connected in a way that it would allow current to flow down like this. Once again we've got 0 volts here and negative 5 volts here so this is higher than this. Again the current would like to go this way if the diode would allow it. This time the diode does allow it. So Again, using an ideal diode, the voltage across here when it's conducting will be zero. So voltage then will be zero. And the current flowing will be zero minus a minus five. I will be zero minus a minus five divided by 2.5 kilo ohms. And that get it then gives us two milliamps. Now these next two circuits are a little bit interesting. We've got three different diodes connected so that they would conduct in this direction. We've got three volts here, two volts here, and one volt there. I'm going to ground. Now the current then is set up. This uh, is set up so we've got a higher voltage here than here. So we might think then, well, couldn't they all be conducting? Well, let's look at what would happen if all three of them were conducting. We'd have one volt here. 2 volts here and 3 volts here, there would be an indeterminate voltage at this point, at this node. Is it 1 volt, is it 2 volts, or is it 3 volts? Well, clearly, only one of them can be on, because if any two of them were on, we'd still have that, that, uh, that discrepancy of the voltage. So now, which diode is on? Let's just assume that the 1 volt diode is on.
and that the other two are off. If the one, if this diode is conducting, I'll have one volt here. If I have one volt here, I'll have one volt there and one volt there also. But if this was one volt, this diode would be forward biased. I'd have two volts on this side of the diode, one volt on this side of the diode. This diode would also be on. And similarly, one volt here, three volts there, this diode would be on also. So it can't be that this one is on and these two are off. If this one's on, these two would also be on and we'd be back to where we were before with an indecisive uh, voltage here. So now let's look at what happens if the th this diode is conducting. I've got three volts here. I'd have three volts here. Now if I've got three volts here and two volts here, that makes this diode reverse biased and not conducting. Similarly, if this one is on, then that would keep, or that would give us a three volts here, one volt there, three volts there. This diode would be reverse biased also. And so our assumption then, our guess this time around, is that this one's on and these two are off is correct. Because if this one's on, it will keep these other two off. And in fact, that's the right answer. So for part E, the uh, output voltage would be, 3 volts, and the current would be 3 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm would be 3 milliamps. Finally, example four, uh, F here. Very much similar to this one with some obvious examples or uh, differences. First of all, we've got a positive 5 volts going through the 1 k ohm resistor here. So the resistor is tied to 5 volts rather than to ground. And you'll also notice that the direction the diodes are pointing is the opposite of what it was over here. Now what's going to happen? For the same reason, that using the same logic that we did over here, all three of them cannot be on. Only one of them is going to be on. Which one will be on this time? Well, let's just assume, as we did over here, let's assume that the, three, the diode connected to the three volts is on here. That true, turned out to be the correct answer. Well, let's just see here. If this was three volts and this is conducting, then I'd have three volts here. I'd also have three volts here. But if I had three volts here and two volts here, this diode would be forward biased. So if this one is on, this one's going to be on, and this one is going to be on, we can't have all three of them on. So this diode is not conducting. Let's look and see what happens if this diode is conducting and these other two are off. Our assumption is that this one is conducting, these other two are off. If this one's conducting, I've got one volt here. If I've got one volt there, I've got one volt here and there also. One volt here, two volts there, I've got a higher voltage on this side of the diode than this diode, this side of the diode, and this diode would be reverse biased, as would this diode. So the guess that this one's conducting, these two aren't, is the correct guess. And we'd have then that the voltage would be V would equal 1 volt, and I then would equal, if it's 1 volt here, 5 minus 1 divided by 1 kilo ohm equals 4 milliamps.